Hey. Hi. Me and you again. That's just us. Oh boy. That's just us. We're, we're just going to run the Arts Council. Well, all right. We can do that. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that without all of us. <laughs> I need everybody to help. Community. Participants coming in. I wish I had beer. To share. <laughs> all that beers right now. That'd be great. That would be great. I could go get one. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my office though. They don't want your beers here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I like it, Kathy. Oh yeah, yeah, my top. Yeah, my girl. There she is. Don't it look like Pebbles Flintstone? Yes. I just like, well, what the heck? I'm among friends. It was hot. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Okay. I'm gonna. And welcome to Hollywood Squares. Yeah, oh, that right. Good. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get the minutes and get started. Wait, where? Are you? Okay. Uh oh, I just lost everyone. Can what? you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Well, what happened? Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not my strong suit. You are fine. We are fine. How's everyone doing? Hi, Freeman. How are you? I'm well. It's good. How are you? Same. Everybody's <laughs> looking good. Thank you, Rachel. Nice to see you. It's been a while. I don't. Did you say Rachel? Where is Rachel? She's here. I saw her. Oh, I'm here. She's next to you on my screen. There she is. Hi, Rachel. Hey. How are you doing? There, there's somebody's blowing leaves out my window, so I'm going to mute my um, microphone so you don't hear that. <laughs> I can't hear it. We're fine. I'm not That's a, nice of you. I'm not a fan of landscaping noise. I don't like the lawnmowers, the leaf Me too. Blowers. Oh, my God. The leaf blowers are... Like I got use a rake already. Seriously, use a rake. Use your hands. Lazy. Yes, L A Z Y. They, just, they have these things on, but they subject the rest of us. Um, Brian, how are your birds? The birds are in good health. Um, the birds. They're growing. Uh, the one that we hand raised during COVID loves us very much and is very sweet. But he doesn't like anybody else. Right. Not, is not is not the best thing. Oh, what what kind of birds are these, Brian? The the younger one is a Quaker. His name is Condor. Quaker? I don't know those. It's a it's a small parrot. Oh my God! Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, he's green and he has a beak <laughs> and he likes to nibble people that he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Appropriate ways. Okay. Um, and the other one's a smaller, older bird, and she's a green cheek, and she's very sweet. And she's oh, like, neat. neat. These yeah. are birds you have in your house, in cages? Yes. They have uh -huh. a cage, they have a perch, they have a little cage. No, they great. They like to hang out on me and poop on me. Nice. Oh, yeah. So I have a lot of old t-shirts. Yeah. Of, uh, Eric Adding, are you ready for having children? Yes. I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, there you go. My girlfriend. It, it was like a, it was like a dry run. Oh my God. <laughs> for, for taking care of other, other things. We got, where's Alan? Hey, Alan. I'm here. I'm, I'm just going to my dinner. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get on the video when, uh, when I'm done. Hey, Alan. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, I'm Hello. eating in front of everybody. Jeez. Yeah, well, we're horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Pebbles. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, for the sake of the minutes, is Courtney coming? Yes, no? Uh, she's not coming. Okay. Okay. And then Esther is still on leave, and Sarah is no longer part of this, correct? And neither is Alan, right? Um, I know Alan isn't. I think Esther is only on the ink ink board. Let me oh, just... really? Okay. Because wasn't she sort oh, of like? No, she a VP. She's still on the uh, both. Board. She's on both. Yeah. She's on both. Courtney is on one. Yep. Um, 
I don't know what, what's going on with Rachel. I have her on the ink board. Oh, Rachel. Yeah, Rachel is here. We have to find out whether or not you're you're a Northampton person. Are you from them yet, Rachel? They, no, they just won't reply. <laughs> Same here. What's that? I've been emailing them about our new possible board members, and I haven't got an email back. I've emailed twice or three times. I, have I know, a, we saw that. I have a meeting with the mayor on Thursday, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that okay. uh, some things happen. Okay. Ryan, I sent hard copy of my reapplication maybe five weeks ago and have heard nothing. Wow. To the mayor's office, so. Yeah, I'm, I will, I will, uh, I'll go over there and uh, I don't, I can't, I don't meet him in person. I meet him on Zoom, right. but I'll, I'll stop. Sure. Okay. Off. Okay. okay. He's the one who, he's the mayor's uh, assistant and I'll make sure that uh, court. Is that the guy who used to be the actor, Courtney? I am think the guy up in from Franklin County. Court Klein? I don't know. Yeah. He could be an actor. He has that kind of face. He's short and he's kind of like wiry. I don't know if you know him. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I can't remember. He's anyway, pretty, okay. He's married to this, like, pretty, like, he's married to an anesthesiologist. No, no. Um, well, I don't think so. I don't they convinced them to get a Tesla because they're rich, but they didn't do it. Oh. Okay. Um, so I got this. I don't look at, I don't see what our, our let me look at the uh, okay. agenda over here. Okay. Nice yep. to see you, buddy. All right. I can see you sitting in the office. Yeah. It's, I, you know what? It's yeah. right here. They gave me an AC and I have like mm -hmm. AC. Great. My big desk and I can do work and I'm away from my house. Oh my God. Oh, you are in the office. Mm -hmm. I see right now. And you're by yourself and safe. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, great. I have all my COVID supplies though. I have my large bottle of hand sanitizer. I have my, these are all city, 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 my city mask. Oh Is yeah, I got commercial. It. Yeah, this is a commercial. <laughs> okay. Wipes to wipe down all the surfaces. There you go. Great. I have my Northampton Health Department uh, temperature. I take my temperature with this. The reusable reader. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Does everybody have the agenda in front of them? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I will in a minute. This is this meeting is being held by Zoom. Mm-hmm. Okay. The audio is being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to open public comment period uh, up. I don't think we have anybody mm -hmm. here today, so we can mm -hmm. uh, Did everybody get a chance to review the meeting minutes from July 14th, 2020? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Are there any amendments or omissions or uh, any way we need to uh, change the minutes from last month? Um, there's actually something that I would um, like to bring up because I don't remember this actual quote. It's in the um, the second paragraph of the public art project minutes. Mm -hmm. And there's a, <clears throat> in the second line, it says, um, in reference to the resiliency center, mm -hmm. Bidwell is developing uh, he was a city councilor and has, mm -hmm. quote, deep pockets and deep connections. I actually don't know anything oh. about his pockets. <laughs> well, I don't remember why I would put something there like that, because it seems like that's not as, um, I apologize, then, because it really isn't appropriate. I, I just, you know, I just saw that and I thought, Good point. I don't even, I don't Good even point. know, I don't know if I knew, I, you know, I had subsequently heard that Dennis made a very generous contribution to, I can't remember what. But I okay. didn't know that beforehand. <laughs> okay, no, that that makes sense. Okay. He's been supportive of us in the past financially. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's fine. Um, I'll just put it in there. Is there? Uh, would they be accepted with the with the deletion of that quote or something or something up to the effect of can make make a sentence up that sort of says the same thing about his generosity or something just so I can add that. Okay. We're going to move a motion to approve the minutes mm -hmm. as, amended, as verbally amended by Freeman. Yeah. Okay. So Freeman, you just got to give me give me something at some point. Can I have a second? I'll send you something. Should I, want me to just send you something? Yeah. Yeah. Good enough. Seconds okay. to approve the minutes as amended. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Okay, I just need okay. visual. I need visual hands. Sorry, it's, it's Zoom. There's a hand. All in oh, I'm not on this board. I, well, it's weird because I can turn both of them. Okay. okay. You know, there are minutes for both boards, so we have. Right. They're both. kind of combined. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. well, we got Ellen. So what do we mm -hmm. for? I just want to see if we have a quorum. Do we have a quorum? Because the minutes of twenty of June were tabled, like apparently. We have a quorum for uh, the both municipal board. Mm -hmm. According to last month's meeting. And we have a quorum for the uh, in board too. We need to add another person to the in board, so we have. Uh, Me. Me, Esther's not on. Stevens and Kathy are here for the ink board. And Rachel now. Right? Sorry. Let me, let me, let me, let me, Is he going to, does he get a voting, uh, is he vote two for which board? The ink or the municipal? Oh, yeah. He's, he's just an ink, that's all. He's an ink board member, okay. Um, so we have, a, so the, 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 the minutes have passed. Um, do you want to try to approve the minutes from last? So we table the minutes from last. Can we have right. to approve mm -hmm. the minutes from the June meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I move. I so move. Mm -hmm. I have a second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Great. We're up to date. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, I'm going to check right now, but so um, anything from artist reception, I have table, biennial, cinema. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Danielle, Rachel, or Freeman, do you want to talk anything about the equity committee? Uh, I don't think we had. Do we have anything else? Not right now. We haven't really discussed or had a meeting before mm -hmm. this meeting, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to log into the, I have LCC funds because we have, you know, we do the LCC every fall. Yeah. Um, the last time I logged in, which was uh, late last week, they haven't like given us a money, how much money we're going to give out. So I'm going to log in right now and see if that, if that's mm -hmm. um, oh. FY 2021 allocation not yet available. Okay. Um, and and I think. What I think that? the last update that we gave was really going to be stuff that we planned to roll out and pilot with the spring grant, but then the spring grant became our emergency relief grant. Right. So I would say maybe maybe the, the three or four of us can get together and touch base about what we would do for the fall grant if we could like reuse the plan that we created for spring or if there's something else that we want to think about in terms of how we're being responsive to this current moment for fall. Yeah, we could change, we could change the uh, ahead. Of, it has to be ahead of time. We could yeah. change our priorities, our local priorities. In, um, so we should meet. Uh, we should the subcommittee should meet earlier, mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Discuss how we want to incorporate that, and then we can we could try to have an emergency board meeting. Because our board meeting in September. I don't. I think they're pushing everything back from my conversations with uh, my the MCC. Mm -hmm. I think everything's going to be pushed back a, a, a little bit, so maybe we'll have time to have another board meeting to uh, ratify any like changes. Right. Or okay. That sounds but good. Be great, Danielle. Let's let's uh, let's see. Let's get together the equity committee and, and mm -hmm. see if we can incorporate any of our ideas from RTZ into the LCC. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So, is it the equity committee? Is that sort of? Do, don't we have an LCC, a, a grant committee too? I'm trying to look. Oh yeah. So, so we kind of bend in together, overlap. Good. Right. I think like they're the same. They're the same membership. So okay, we, cool, excellent. Put them together, and we talk about different stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, I tabled the online communications um, committee because uh, the designer dropped doing the logo over because he has been doing posters for us. Oh okay. yeah, they're great posters. So poster is done. I'll make sure that we get uh, some more logo things, and I still have to share that with you, Aiden. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see if I can find that right now and share that with you. That was the local treatment that I was telling you about. 
Um, Ryan, you're recording this, so I can, when I leave, because I am going to leave around. I will share it with you. It's definitely recorded. I'll definitely okay. share it. With you. Good. Share it with me so I can do up the minutes then. Yep. Cool. I'm not sure if this really falls under equity work or not. I mean, it's, it's definitely equity work, but I, and I know it's on our agenda, but I wonder if it would also be, while we're talking about that a little bit, useful to go to the new like outreach committee to talk about board stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, we... Either one, where we, where do we have that? Uh, should we have, yeah. Uh, the only other thing we have to talk about is the public art thing. I have both, I have both. Well, unless, you know, remember when um, we, we shared a document um, that uh, Danielle had started and wrote um, with regards to recruitment for new board members and have, yeah. you know, so that might be what, yeah. that, that's what you're talking more about, right, Danielle? Yeah, so yeah. I, I know that there was like a little group that was on a thread about it. I'm not sure if everyone saw that email that went out. Um, and I'm not sure like how many slots we now have available. Mm -hmm. but I heard from like six people that were really, really interested right. and are like POC artists that we have either worked with in the past or have like applied to art grants. So I think it was like pretty successful. Right. Good. Um, and if we did have more openings, I would say like maybe we can circulate that outreach email with the yeah. wider team. I can paste mm -hmm. it in here. If yeah. that with the what team? With the what kind of team did you say? The rest of the team, like all of you. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. The other thing, uh, I just, just, out of, just out of, um, um, you know, if we don't have, you know, if we've exceeded our openings that people may be wanting to get onto the ink board too, you know, because that's, that might be a one way. And then it, when, when time coming, they can always join the municipal board, but that could be one way, but since we are kind of melded together, it's just a thought a good idea i like uh, the municipal board as uh, like vetting for the ink board i feel like the ink board okay. i have like either organization organizational historical knowledge or i've put a lot of work into the municipal board and kind of like deserve the like okay. the, understand how everything okay. works they move things. Mm -hmm. um that's how i feel mm -hmm. like you know how when i've been part of it it's okay our, the organization that's how it works i'd rather have people like start on the thing but if we have somebody that's from outside that is not a northampton resident that is like a superstar i would you know have it the committee yeah. To yeah. talk about that yeah well you know the other thing is like some boards and again you know depending on and that was one of the concerns uh danielle that you brought up in terms of time and commitment you know if people are really struggling economically they may not have the time or commitment to be able to participate as fully as they probably like or we need so sometimes having an advisory board and having really specific projects for them that might be and i'm again bear with me because i'm thinking out loud that might be a way to kind of get people on and and if we're going to have an advisory board, because I know one, that's one thing that the jazz festivals had decided to have is an advisory board and figuring out what the advisory board's role would be and how they're kept abreast of things, et cetera. That might be, it's just an idea. Um, you know what we really need? I was just updating the board agenda and I mm -hmm. just noticed that all of my, all the participants in the public art subcommittee were not there anymore and not right. Mm. our new board members yeah that would be great I, I think it's something that we've like we really it's like a little bit of a blind spot for us for us yeah. to make public art procedures a little bit more in depth and being more um on top of that that's uh, a good idea easier. um okay so yeah I, I i i'm open to all new members I've been trying to get a, 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 an answer out of Court Klein for all these different people who applied to me. Yeah. Um, and I haven't got that. Now, well, one thing is that maybe they're poached, the mayor's poaching some of our people that were recruiting for other boards. <laughs> well, that could be, you know, I mean, they need, you know, all the boards are deficit, I think. It's the hard times and stuff. And I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because um, people sometimes when they put in, I know like Dennis Helmus, who ended up coming on to the Council on Aging, he put in for the Arts Council too, you know, I mean, uh, but he got sort of recruited by the mayor to come to the COA. 
Brian, I spoke to um, a young woman today who's thinking of moving back into Northampton. She's a Smith graduate. She's working with a company in DC. She's for, during the pandemic, she's with her parents in Northampton, hmm. which is where she grew up. And she's involved in public art kinds of projects. Yeah. Um, and she's probably going to reach out to you because I, I encourage her to speak to you. Hmm. Her name is Johanna. Uh, Renard. Renard. So, yeah, and she was, and, she, and Reed is the one who referred yeah. referred her to me because of some, just some questions she had. And, and uh, I think, it, you know, I'm expecting that she'll reach out to you shortly. Mm -hmm. Our biggest hurdle to public art is Wayne Fighting. Because mm. he has the architectural business district central committee or something. Um, I did, uh, we can, if you guys want to, so, Please get more members, but I'm gonna just wrap this as part of the public art conversation. Yeah. Um, so I've been, uh, Danielle and myself have been uh, working with the Northampton Mural for Diversity right. team. And uh, we, I was able to connect them with Thorns Market owners and they have the Thorns Market has offered the, the back wall to them. Oh, good, wow. excellent, oh, that's excellent. That's great. Good one. They started yeah. on me, which we shared around as well, which is cool. Um, and uh, <clears throat> they're a little bit worried about that wall. So I'm going to keep on trying to find um, a wall. Because Basically, Wayne chimed into our email saying that like any, and I know this already, which is weird how they have the, 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 the ability to stop this. But if it's an exposed brick building, like the one across the street, see the red one right there? Yeah, yeah. A building like that but if it's like the one next, without getting the central architectural whatever committee to, to say it's okay but if it's like the one that's already painted on we can paint on those yeah yeah oh, interesting. Oh, how interesting wow wow hey, brian yeah have you, have you been in touch with jeff bliss or anyone else from the arts oh. trust about this I, con I connected uh amelia who's the the person that is our contact with the whole team and i'm definitely mm -hmm. Uh, I gave them Jeff's email, and I, I don't know if he's reached out or not, or if they reached out to him or not, because that would be well, a good thing. They, they did, and and I basically tried to sort of um, stop him from putting too much energy into it, because it really seemed to me like they'd been in touch with you, right. and that there was no point in the Arts Trust getting all involved if this was going to be something which I think rightfully so would be an arts council mm -hmm. link and, and not a link to the arts trust. Mm -hmm. Or they're just, they're just looking for a place to paint. Even. Yes. So if, the, if the, any part of that building is like one, you guys want a mural on any part of that building, that's what I think what now I connected mm -hmm. Amelia with the arts trust for. So well, I, my, my thought was that, you know, if, if they've made a connection with you and you've been able to connect them uh, with the people at Thorns, then, you know, let that be where it goes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know because uh, I, I think they're, they might not do the Thorns thing because it might in, uh, include a bucket loader because they want only the back wall, you know, the back entrance where you can go into Cornucopia. Hmm. That's the wall that they're thinking of. So uh, the newest update, which I got this afternoon, was that Amelia is looking for, still looking for other places to hmm. make this mural uh that's hmm. a little bit easier and is maybe ground level and won't need a bucket loader because you have a lot of hmm. involved well that's too bad because having a bucket loader would really add a little bit more presence i think a bigger or somehow yeah and uh, maybe yes, less graffiti there's another email i just got from her like around six uh 620 that i haven't mm -hmm. checked and she sent me some images of some municipal buildings maybe oh. and i have to take a look at them and see mm -hmm. if they're owned by the city and I have to figure oh. out how we get, I get permission to paint on those buildings so mm -hmm. um so you know having this new person Freeman that has uh, more experience with public art and how to navigate it and maybe like you know I've had some board support to start creating some like codifying the public art process here mm -hmm. uh, will be very helpful yeah. another, another, another aspect of you know yeah. So that we can add to the city. Which That'd be good. So she could be like a, a, the subcommittee because we can invite people outside the Arts Council yes. onto a specific. So that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think she'd, she'd be very interested. 
Very good. Uh, any, you know, any people that were working on this project, Danielle, that are not residents can also, if they have time and energy, join the subcommittee too. Yeah. That would be great. See that I think that's a good way to get people involved, and it's it's also limited. I mean, it's very focused, and and people can put their energy in it. Do you want to talk about the proposal at all, or is that going to happen another point? Oh, we can talk about it right now. Um, I think <clears> I can <throat> you guys this morning, but I can do another share right now. Mm -hmm. A proposal for the for the post for the mural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was wonderful. Hmm. Um, let's see. Where did I put that thing? Uh, too many files. Uh, I emailed you guys a PDF today. You did. Oh, another one. Um, but I'm looking for it for myself. So mm -hmm. we... I've been all over the place today. You sent it at 817. Thank you. No. I'm just, uh, there it is. It's the newest one. I haven't even had a chance to do that. And I'll make sure that I send it to Rachel again. Mm -hmm. I'll just, you guys can have a, a copy of it on. Uh, okay. There you go. So I just want to make sure Rachel gets to see it. Yeah. Um, so mm. they updated that. Why didn't they add? Okay, here we go. There's an artist statement, and they have some mm -hmm. of the. Um, they added to it. Wait, you sent this today? Yeah, I think today in the PDF. Yeah. Mm. I also just uploaded it to the chat in case that's easier for people. Mm. Yeah, you click on the chat bar on the bottom. Nice job, Danielle. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so they, we were Danielle and I joined a meeting last Thursday. Right. With, uh, a, a, like probably like six or seven members of the team. And uh, mm -hmm. the idea is to, the workshop piece of this is really gonna be powerful. And I think the artist statement, which they're gonna, I think incorporate into the design is gonna also be really helpful mm -hmm. uh, as an education piece as well as an art piece. Mm. So, you know, the, most of the, most of the, 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 PDF we emailed you is similar to what we already sent, except for the end. After it says video and files, there's extra pages with, mm -hmm. more, with new, a new updated art piece and then an artist statement that you guys okay. Since this morning? Updated since this morning? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's also worth noting, um, they, so Brian and I both communicated a bunch of the feedback that came from the board at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And it was about like incorporating community dialogue and conversation yes. right. to like <laughs> people understand the, um, the symbolism and the iconography that's in the mural, which might not immediately resonate for public audiences. Right. And part of their process for the design, which they explained to us, and I think is it's touched on in the proposal, but it, I'll just reiterate, um, the lead artists have been doing like future visioning workshops mm -hmm. with kids in Amherst, Springfield, and I think like Northampton as well, but primarily schools mm -hmm. that are based in Amherst and Springfield. Mm -hmm. And they've been asking questions to those students about like what they want the future to look like for, for Black people in America. What does Black Lives Matter mean when you think about your future? Mm -hmm. And all of the symbolism that's in the mural has come from like mm -hmm. student feedback, from, mm -hmm. from youth feedback, basically. Um, huh. And one of the artists who was working on the design and leading some of the workshops, I think is like a, a very young person. I'm not sure if they're a teenager or like in their early 20s, Mars, mm -hmm. um, but they're very young. And um, they worked on the design in a way that was really, really about incorporating youth feedback, which I mm -hmm. like, Honestly, like the design is not something I would have picked out of a lineup to say this needs to go on a wall, like mm. from just from my experience, like working in a museum. However, mm. hearing Mars talk about the design was really, really powerful um, mm. and like completely changed my opinion of the work. So that's one reason I'm saying it's really important, I think, to read this, this statement at the end. And one of the things I suggested was including that either in a QR code or with like audio of Mars reading that description um, alongside the work. And that's what Brian was alluding to. Um, another bit of feedback that they incorporated was, um, 
I think it was Freeman who suggested making sure there was like community conversation. So the students that the artists have been leading in these workshops would like to lead the same workshop that they participated in wow. for the public. Okay. So as the mural is being made or when it's complete, depending on like right. where things are with public health, maybe by Zoom, maybe in person, socially distanced, yeah. right. the kids who participated in this really want to ask the questions that they were asked to us and to people walking by. And it just sounded like so empowering for them it sounded like it would be an incredible experience for anyone who just was walking by and stumbled upon it. And it also seemed like a great experience for people who intentionally wanted to seek out this experience. Um, and I thought that th they just were really, really smart and took to heart the feedback that we gave. Mm -hmm. And and I think the proposal has like, obviously it was like good at the beginning, but I think it's really grown and shown a lot of strength and um anyway i i'm really 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 impressed with them on the call and think that they would be a phenomenal group right. for us to support for this project but then also to cultivate a relationship with to like bring in for other projects i think they'd be wonderful okay. and there's one person on that who's a northampton artist right is emily everybody amelia, amelia i yeah, think sorry. there are others right brian who was that so who are, who are Northampton artists and stuff like that? The Northampton artists that are part of the project? Yeah. I think there's like three or four. Oh, it's on there. You can check on the, um, hmm. on the, on the, so uh, the photographer who's documenting the project, Mari, who's the, the designer, the primary designer and the empowerment coach yeah. um, is from Northampton. And that's like the lead okay. designer who's doing okay. the workshops okay. with kids mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, great. Naya, I, I don't know if Naya is in Hadley or Northampton, but has like been around this area mm -hmm. for a long time, works at Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Julie well, is the photographer and is going to be doing like video footage of this for archival yeah. purposes and also for an online component is in Northampton. Yeah. Well, you know, it's almost like having, and I'm just, again, I don't mean to interject here, but hearing you talk about Mars's, um, um, you know, um, summary or, or what was said, somehow it's like at the time when all this happened, things get excited and done. But once people leave and stuff like that, you have the wall, but having some something that people can kind of either listen to or something at the at the project itself, I think it just can, you know, having that narrative to to um, to company that is is something that I think is is really important to kind of explain a lot more to people. I, don't know. I agree, Kathy. I think I think we should mm -hmm. um, have something written next to or under the mural itself, explaining the, yeah. explaining yeah. as it was quite well explained in the document that was sent, mm -hmm. explaining just like that, very simply, mm -hmm. the symbolism because it's meaningful. But I also think what you were saying, Danielle, about what Mars was saying, the excitement and the kind of um, the human contact, I think, to me, is really essential and it, and it carries a lot of weight, I, I think, anyway. It makes it come alive more. Um, one of the questions that hmm. I had <clears throat> in reading the proposal was, I'm not exactly clear how um, the voices of the people of color who live in Northampton in mm. particular is is in, engaged. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, it's not completely clear to me. I mean, it seems a little amorphous. Do you have any more information uh, about that, about what efforts are, are made to actually reach out to the community before the mural goes up? Yeah, so they've been updating their progress on a group called, on a Facebook group called 413 Stay Woke, Stay Active. Um, and that's a group that, it's, it's Connecticut River Valley region, but obviously like includes a lot of Northampton residents. And the purpose is to like find ways to activate um, community and social organizing around Black Lives Matter. Okay. So that's one of their primary um, sources of like volunteers and contributors and they've been updating their progress on that page 
So they've made it very, like I've seen those posts and I'm a member of that group and do work for their like leadership team. The organizers have made it really clear that they're open to anyone being a part of it. They've just been doing it in this space because um, it feels like a safe that's already a space that's already safe. It's already vetted. It's already people who kind of like understand the framework that they're operating within. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. These are the formal contributors. I'm not sure the extent to which they've had like passing conversations and like supportive comments and little critiques here and there from other artists. They've just listed the folks that are like. Mm -hmm. showing up when they activate the program and who are leading the workshops. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that they've t talked to a lot of other people about it, but we can also ask them to like share how that feedback has weighed in because to your point, I have really heard about how this, the youth feedback has weighed into their design, but that's not to say that other people haven't been or couldn't be further consulted in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think we should just vote to, you know, make a motion to ratify it as. Well, I just, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't see anywhere in there. Uh, well, a couple of questions. How big this is going to be? I didn't see any. Their dimensions set. They said that they're planning their dimensions around this space. So since they haven't actually haven't confirmed this. Well, I mean, if they get a wall, were they going to take up the whole wall, or are they going to take like a quarter? The, like, do they didn't say anything about the scale or? Because like, how big is the wall? Mm. Right. They well, waiting I mean, the design plan based on the wall that they're going to pull on. I imagine it'll take up the majority of the wall. Mm -hmm. it's, it's um, and the other thing is, like, um, and a couple of people, other people have touched on this. Like, it seems like it needs m more explanation than mm. murals that it usually do. I mean, because not everyone is going to walk up and read a placard. You know, like they're seen as people kind of like walk by or drive by or, you know, no one's, not everyone's going to be able to like scan something or stop and read a placard. And I kind of agree with those who have said something along the lines of like, it's not quite representing what they're saying it represents yet. It's not that straightforward enough, I feel, for a bureau. It's true that the imagery is a little confusing until you read it. I agree with that. Um, so maybe they need to, that needs to be discussed with them. Yeah. Or I mean, if they're, if I, and I, you know, I don't want to tell them how to change it, but like mm. if it had something like along the bottom that was part of the mural, that's a one liner, I don't know, but like you as it stands, it's, it's, what's that? All this about like the imagery being unfamiliar is because we're all white people. Are well, I guess that that's the thing I'm thinking. I of. get they're that. All white but, person. I culture. get that. So read the goddamn placard. Okay, and you'll learn, and now you'll know. And I have a so in terms of the Arts Council, this is a um, you know a proposal that's kind of outside of our normal collecting um, you know, submissions for public art and asking for us to sign off on it. Is that correct? Because it's I mean, not to put the kibosh on it. No, I think guys, there should be more explanation. I understand how. No, no, this, no, this process part is like that none of our other processes have moved. So, um, uh, if you could I, so I think there's some um, procedural and uh, like the size piece I think is important. Them securing a wall is important. These are things we can wait for to vote on this. But the idea to explain imagery of art to me is uh, for this our council to be discussing that is something that is beyond me. Um, I think we should just approve it uh, when more of the logistics to make it more, uh, to, to, if it's actually going to happen. I, they have a wall, but I don't think they're going to do that wall. So maybe we can just tell them they need to like secure a wall and get us dimensions and then maybe we can go forward or if you're Brian, comfortable with this. I, yes? Brian, I think that what Ellen is asking is where does this fit in since it's outside the normal uh, grant cycles? Yeah. Oh, we're not here to approve a grant. We're just here to give them permission to do public art. Right. Oh. So it fits in with what goes back a long okay. way, uh, which is that anything that uh, essentially constitutes a public arts project mm -hmm. should go through us and not through Wayne Fiden first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ellen, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think that's helpful. So I think we're in a, a role, the municipal 
board is in a role of guidance and advice here and assistance with helping them uh, do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're not we're not allocating funds. Mm -hmm. We're not grant. We're giving them a grant. Right. I mean, they've used this normal our normal format and stuff. It seems like they're applying to the arts council. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and I, I think that's why, I've been, I, that's why uh, I've been confused. I used our arts easy grant. Right. I remember you said that at last the last meeting. Okay. I feel like I need to adopt a new one for public art or any yeah. just so it's more catered to that to, for the process that we do to approve public art. Mm -hmm. But I just yeah. do that mm -hmm. because we're all using it. what. I thought it was a good proposal. I yeah. just was confused by that format. You know, it just, yeah. I needed to okay. be that up to speed. Well, and thank you, Brian, for bringing that, that other part up. And I guess that part of the thing is like in terms of, for me, it's like communication and trying to, part of it for some of us, like white P, you know, it's like to learn and to understand and to um, try to, and supporting. And part of it is learning, you know, and kind of, being a part and 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 um, you know all that is is really important in terms of communication and connecting, and that was all it was. I agree with all of that, and I, I offered as feedback to the the mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. it together yeah. is that maybe um, okay. find funding for the future to offer yeah. tools to have a workshop at the mural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So members to teach the workshop that they've been, they've been teaching uh, right now about yeah. the. Right. Yeah. But you know, I also think, I think it's important maybe, and I'm just thinking out loud, is to have that as a discussion at like, for instance, one of the um, speaker series at Northampton Neighbors and to reach out, you know, to people who aren't you know, part of that group, but to go to older, you know, older or white people and just kind of connect and, 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 um, it's a great yeah. idea. I, I don't know. I just kind of, I just feel like that's how I learn and kind of am a much more, you know, to understand things and reaching out to people. Maybe we can encourage them to write a grant and yeah. have some of the, their team members who are, yeah. are workshop educators to have like open workshops yeah. and invite right. all the community on the weekend. Right. Have and like, I, mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. Um, well, Danielle said somebody's videotaping it, which yeah. I, I was hoping would right. happen. And maybe we could put that video on mm -hmm. at Holly Street a few times mm -hmm. a year. I mean, mm -hmm. that is a pretty significant, mm. uh, will be a pretty significant and meaningful video, I think. Yeah. That it yeah. could be taken, Freeman and I are supposed to work on schools that could be mm -hmm. taken to the schools. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea, Lori. Thank you. Uh, we haven't been able to work on schools, but we will mm -hmm. when we can, I guess. Yeah. I assume. Um, can I speak for you, Freeman? Is that all right? Yeah, please do. <laughs> I think they're going to need a lot of video uh, content in the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be a nice piece. That's all so there is. We're, we're hoping that Northampton Open Media will be uh, available to, 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 to mm -hmm. have this and have it in the public television station as well. But Northampton hasn't even made a school decision yet, has it? They have, right? Oh. All remote. Nothing. All remote. Like, I just yeah. fell in line with Smith College. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um. So. Okay. Yeah. Going forward, so I, you know. Good. Well, this is a good discussion. Thanks. I appreciate everybody's yeah. patience and just kind of understanding. This was really good. I yeah. think you know it's Northampton finding the uh, uh, the the ball is always the hardest part. Yeah. I had a discussion with the owners of Thorn yesterday morning, uh, Jody, and they've been open. They've been open for a while, but mm. they have no financial support for it. They're just mm. going to give the permission. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the budget that these uh, this team has put together does not have um, does not reflect what it would take to put a mural on the, the wall that Thorn mm. has a mural on because they're going to need like. I don't, I don't know, it's not a bucket loader, but what is the little chairlift thing they use to clean windows? Dairy stuff? pickers or, you know, what are they called? They don't have that budget in there. That's like $700 a day or three. Right, yeah. A day. Um, so, wow. I'm working. She emailed me. Most of the buildings, she just emailed me. Pictures of buildings are more, mostly Eric Sewer owns them. Um, so, I sent her the contact for Eric, who's in Miami and who hasn't responded to anybody's inquiries since COVID started. Um, 
So, and then the other one was the county courthouse. So maybe I can figure out who. Oh, well, that would be hard because of the, it's a historic um, building and in oh, terms of painting. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll keep on working. To okay. Where wow. We can, you know. Hmm. Is there any word on the Roost building? No, didn't um, even post it? I, I can't find, I'm still trying to find the contact. I know the person's name. It's a, it's. The, the, per, the people who own the roost live in Hawaii. Hmm. And, uh, the building. The building. I mean, no, the building of roost is in the Hawaii. I sent her the, the, the email. Hmm. I sent her the contact, like the mailing address this morning. Mm -hmm. I can't find the email or the phone number for the person. And I reached out to somebody to, to see if hmm. I could do that. Hmm. Um, but the problem with the roost is that they were going to do the, the scene in the change bureau and then at right. Red and they backed out so but i'm you know i reached out to rochelle who was doing the seasons of change mural right if they have she has the email address still i think it's for his name is paul e brown who owns that building huh she hasn't got back to me yet um wow. i wonder if somebody around like amy or somebody a more local northampton people might know him and have a connection or something yeah. sometimes you those tried. those i tried yeah. for amy and she didn't get anything for me oh cool there is a tool on the city website where you can, um, I can email you guys a link. I'll put it to you right now. Um, and you can basically see who owns any property in Northampton. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I'll, I'll put it below. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going back a step, but uh, uh, Ellen, I was glad you asked the question about the application because I was confused about yeah. that format too. And since that came up, I just wanted, um, since they did request five thousand dollars, I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that they had a way to to finance the mural. Okay. They have a GoFundMe, and they're up to thirty five hundred on it. And then oh, I sent them cool. two different um, mm. applications that the NEA is doing right now, and it's like. It's basically they're like tailor made for this. Both of them are, I think, five okay. uh, grants by the NEA. And I can send okay. you those links right now. And uh, they're both basically tailor made because they think it's like the project is perfect for it. Okay. Here. Um, it's called uh, Imagine Spatial Justice and Create Spatial Justice mm -hmm. this grant. And they're going to apply to those two. Okay. So I just, put, I just added mm -hmm. two different links. Right. One of them is to figure out the, who owns which property, and the other two are the two uh, NIFA grants that are like mm -hmm. uh, for this grant. Right. Um, so they're doing, they're being successful fundraising the community right now, which is great. And I right. uh, also have the, uh, the GoFundMe link right now for everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be so glad when we get the, get the recording here. I've been I've been listening more intently than taking minutes, so I hope you're trying to follow and understand. So. I'll be glad for the minute's sake. Here's the GoFundMe link. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I cut you off, uh, Eamon. I was I got a little inappropriate. My my apologies. I got a little bit uh, excited, so I apologize to you, Eamon, for cutting you off. Um, is there any other discussion? Do we need them? To, we probably need them to polish this up a little bit before we approve it. Yeah. Hi, Kathy Murray. Hi, Kathy. It's gone. Oh, too late. Uh oh. Um, Okay, so I guess should we table the uh, approving the public art design till mm -hmm. next? Well, well, when you say when you say approving, mm -hmm. what is it that we would be approving? When you say approve it, what is it that actually we would be approving? The the idea of doing this sort of a project is that it? We're basically deeming it public art and giving them right. public art. Right? Yeah, and then that they could bring it forward to like. You know, when they go to do like Wayne Fiden's, whatever that committee is, and stuff like that, that they, the Arts Council has given it, given it, it's, it's sort of Our okay, approval. right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what's what's the reason for waiting. I mean, if that's what we're giving approval toward. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll add this. Uh... Mm -hmm. This is the email I got from Wayne. Mm -hmm. That was also the ISSL top mm -hmm. here. I'm going to leave in five, uh, four minutes or so because I, like Kathy, I have a meeting too. So, wow. Anyway, okay. So you would need, you know, if we're going to be voting on something, obviously you'd need us for, um, a, not a quorum, but just the numbers to vote on something. So motion to. Uh, consider this project public art and mm -hmm. approve it. I second. <laughs> Am I allowed to vote uh, now that I'm on ink? Yeah. Well, did you get kicked off the board yet? Oh, I guess I'm not kicked off yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a non voter. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm saying I. <laughs> well, how, how we got in favor? How many people we got? Oh. One, two, three, four, five, and then that's it. Okay, that's it. Let's. Oh, break. but can I? I mean, can I even do it? Because I'm on the ink board, so I I can't even do any of this. I can see your hand though. Okay. <laughs> and I seconded, but I'm I'm not writing who seconded we have a, it. We have a, 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 a quorum, so we can say that that it was a. Okay. Good. Okay. So close break. We get it. We just give them that it's like public art. Mm -hmm. and they get to do it. And right. then we ask the central business mm -hmm. committee, I think it's called, which is a bunch of like architects from downtown Northampton and Wayne Friday. Like, so, but if it's already painted on, then they can just do it. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank you, everybody. Uh, cool. Brian. Brian, before you say this, if, if for some reason you don't, they don't find a building downtown, yeah. Yeah. I just want to remind you that the uh, Florence Paint, mm. the people who own Florence yeah. Paint, they have offered their wall. Oh, I didn't know this. Uh, so, <laughs> so you, know, you know, I think they'd want to have some, some, you know, understanding mm. about what the topic would be, but, you know, they're interested and I think that would be a great spot um, and I think Friends of Northampton Trails would would also consider providing some support mm -hmm. uh, since it would be on the rail trail. So can put their contacts in, can, uh, can you share their contacts with me so I can have Amelia contact them and see mm -hmm. if um, I have to get his contract, but I'll get that to you. Yes. Great. Sorry, Freeman. Is it visible from the bike path? Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. That's the wall they're oh. talking about. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Right, I'll send you a picture of it right now. She's mm -hmm. telling me back and forth right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm going to depart right now, but I'll um, send me the link to the minutes, Brian, and I'll finish up the minutes, okay? Thanks, Kathy. Well, thank you all. Thank Bye, you. Kathy. Take care. Well, thank you. Thanks for tolerating oh, me. Kathy, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Love you, Kathy. Oh. <laughs> you guys are the best. You really are. I'm blessed to be on this board. Okay. Well, let's see. Now I gotta try to get off this. Get on another. A go to meeting. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh yeah. She writes. <laughs> Any other municipal stuff we need to talk about? Say that again? Any other municipal uh, agenda items we want to discuss? We did a new member update, which we have some people that applied. We're just waiting for the mayor's office to, to approve them or acknowledge that I emailed them about it. <laughs> and then we talked about the Northampton Mural for Diversity. I think we can uh, close the municipal meeting. Is there a motion to close the municipal meeting? Sure. I move to close the municipal did meeting. You to, did you want to go over a financial statement? Uh, that's in the ink. That's the ink? Okay. 
Before we close really quick, though, I know we don't have an update on funds from um, the fall grant round. If we yeah. don't get any funding from MCC, would we have a fall grant round? Or yeah. is there a chance that no. we get MCC funding? I would say the answer to that is no. Okay. Pretty grim um, news. I'm sure that we're get something. What was that? Sorry. Is there a chance that like there won't be MCC funding for fall or will that all take place for next, would all those impacts be next year? Uh, it depends on how good lobbying is from MCC, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get something. You know, okay. it's not gonna be as much as we got last year, that's for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. I think it's gonna be pushed back about 15 days or half a month or a month. I think I'm, I'm thinking the allocation is. And then uh, I had a meeting with Kathy Murray today and talk about like uh, finances and what we're looking at. Um, so, you know, I would just either, to me, it's either we keep our staff on or we give money out. So uh, I think that's going to be what we're going to be looking at for the next year. Um, I am applying to that. Uh, we can talk about finance. If you want to talk about finances, we can talk about finances, but I think we should close a municipal meeting and then talk about finances. But, uh, and then we can make that part of the conversation about grant rounds. Um, so can we have a motion to close the municipal meeting? I think I made one. Can I have a second? Second. So Brian, do I need to bow out because I'm not on the ink board? Well, you're always invited to come on the ink board. That's the thing. Like, so the, the municipal board is open to anybody. So we, everybody from the ink board can go to the municipal board meeting. And then the ink board just invites all the board members from the municipal board to go to the ink meeting. Oh. We just have a public anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, it's just rules we have to follow. So all in favor of closing the municipal meeting? Sure. So it's closed, thank you. Uh, it's for the minutes for Kathy. So we're gonna open up the ink meeting. Um, I sent you a financial summary today. Uh, I went over that with uh, Kathy. We've paid out all the checks for COVID-19 relief, almost all of them. I think there's like two missing or three. So that's good. I think this is a decent reflection of how we're looking right now. I'm sure we have some more liabilities that I haven't gone. Maybe like I owe like the sound guy for the last summer concert or, and some of the upcoming costs of trans performance, which are not gonna be like costs from last year. Uh, so yeah. Um, Right now we're okay. We're gonna probably have to dip into savings. Um, I'm worried about FY21, like quarter three and four, uh, because normally we're gonna be, our revenue from trans performance first night and silver cord bowl together about $175,000. So I think the you know the you know the board we have to start thinking about either finding other ways to fulfill our mission, uh, start really doing a deep dive on finding grants like this uh, community foundation grant. Hopefully we get it. It's a fifty thousand dollar grant to keep us operating. Um, right. How much is it, Brian? It can be up to fifty thousand dollars. I hope it's fifty thousand dollars. So, um, and then I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna be joining these MCC meetings and like you know see what's available out there all the time i'm going to be doing i do the cultural district conversations on uh thursdays with our cultural district uh people and then you know they usually like round out other things that are available so you know we have that you know we have we can cut expenses uh our expenses are going to be cut anyways because we're not going to be renting a lot of, out of things and we're not going to be paying artists a lot so i think we're just going to have a really tough year this year um, and it's going to take a hit. Our programming, our programs are going to take a hit, which are like a grant distribution. And then we can talk about like either, you know, cutting staff hours or, you know, cutting staff as well. Um, and I'm thinking like the, the next two quarters, I think we'll be good until, uh, New Year's Eve. And then, you know, the next two quarters of this fiscal year, which will be January through June, we'll have to like, you know, make some decisions or figure out how to transition into a different kind of way to find revenue, which is 
through online donations. Um, right. So I was just going to say that uh, offer backup. Like we could sit down and talk about development and do like a a fundraising strategy for the for the fall. You know, from like say September through December, and with a ramp up leading to end of calendar year, like end of tax year giving, and like do that as a big push. Yeah. Um, but we can do that with like coordinated a coordinated mailing online campaign and you know jazz up the uh our online presence a little bit to be more specific for online giving yeah um, but we could talk, talk about that because that's what i did for like 20 years um, uh, do, do you think you know using our targeted events or signature events as the like points of like uh donation like what we're doing with trans performance and we're I'm thinking about doing that with like first night as well um, you know, the ask is like when we're actually like getting programming as well at the same time. Or mm -hmm. yeah, uh, ha that kind of thing. But also plan to um, do some kind of uh, limited out. You know, cold email. Do a mailing out to people with a slip. Uh, do email list, whatever email list we can get. You know, like and as well. In addition to at events, you make it easy for people at an event to take out their phone and donate right there make it easier and seamless for them to do it at home when they're like, oh yeah, I, I went to support the arts in Northampton. There's a few different channels to do that. In addition to um, obviously like social push. Do you think the idea of like purchasing like a subscription to something like DonorView or one of those like uh, philanthropic databases will be, would be a, a way to go about soliciting donations? Uh, I don't know about like, you mean you're talking about like getting like some uh, like, some names and numbers kind of thing, like getting people that are you looking, um, I don't know, I would want to see what your, um, like what your list is already. I don't know if there's anything out there that would give a, you know, like a, this area, like be worth that expense, but I don't, there are people who know more about that than I do. All right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fundraising push would certainly be a good idea right now. I've well, seen the Arch Trust and the, the Academy of Music have success using that software to like identify donors that they didn't even know existed. Like, and I can say that, you know, I I think I've lost more, you know, contacts than I've gained since the second half of my tenure here, uh, mm -hmm. just as like new businesses and, you know, the transitioning of my position to different responsibilities as opposed yeah. to ground so I mean, if it's if it's worthwhile an investment will be able to use it for a few different things um and sure yeah if there's if there's resource like capital to put into that yeah um but bringing up those channels making it easier for that to happen would well, be great just to clarify are you talking about using like wealth engine to determine who identify more private donors not okay. as, as well You're as not you're not talking about just getting a donor database to hold everyone's addresses to generate no, mailing. I just need yeah. to have okay. donors that I haven't identified. They either moved here recently or for some reason we're not on their radar and they're, they support the arts and they mm. have the, the, the means to do that. Um, uh, I know there's like a really wealthy donor that supports a lot of different organizations that for some reason I have never been able to like get on their radar. Um, so, you know, cultivating contacts like that, that's something and like, and then anybody has like any idea of people that can add to our donor database. And I have to just, you know, maybe do some more, you know, most of my stuff has been worked because I'm selling ads is more focused on um, local business and like local corporations that want to like, you know, that already buy ads in like, you know, the Gazette or on the radio or like to support our events. So a lot of my, you know, and there's like sponsor, I have a sponsor list, I have an ad list, and then I have an in-kind donation list, and I have all that that I've changed, and I have it catered to different events because different organizations support different events and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have a really comprehensive private donor list. Um, well, so if you have a mailing list, like a physical snail mail list um, of past donors and just anyone who's in our in our contact list. Um, I agree with Eamon that doing a, doing a reply envelope mailing okay. um, would would be a good way for us to just identify who our most interested donors are. Because when you start just getting the checks back, you you can mark the people that give at a certain level and flag them as your you know VIPs moving forward. Um, like they're basically 
we may have some of these people in our orbit already and not know it, you know, like, but putting those envelopes out is a way of seeing what comes back. Yeah. I mean, does, does anyone here work for Smith? No. Okay. So uh, um, we could also look at like who support art at Smith College mm -hmm. and, you know, see who's got a general idea. I, mean, I was going to say Amherst, but I let's keep Smith. Uh, <laughs> And you can see who's interested in supporting because they would they would have a connection to Northampton because they spent you know possibly four years here so they might be so there might be people who could support both you know they'd be interested in supporting like there's other ways to find but also like if you're looking for like the big whales um, and if we have if it's worthwhile investment that might be something to look at that database that you're talking about. So is that right. a name that quite a few right. I think my understanding of the the primary donors it's similar. So Smith College Museum of Art is similar to Amherst in that most of our donors are alum and they're not necessarily based locally, which isn't to say that they wouldn't support the Arts Council, but I think that that's like one thing to consider. However, um, some of our potential new board members, I think, are would be very, very useful for this. Um, and I know this is being recorded, so I don't want to give any personal information, but I think that like they would be very, very useful to have in conversation about this, just thinking about their networks and then also um, places that they work um, and their their circles. So I think the sooner we can like bring more people on to these calls, the better. Um, yep. When we're thinking about those top gifts, and I know that we would really rely on those top gifts, but my other thought was, do we have a Venmo account? And can we make it e easy for people to give like 10 and $20 donations? Um, and is that is that something that we could like start doing really easily and just like put messaging out as like Venmo us ten dollars or Venmo us twenty dollars and I know I know we're looking to close the gap of somewhere in the two hundred thousand dollar hundred seventy five thousand dollar window which like Venmo may not be able to do alone but that might help supplement like one person's hours being cut um, yeah and just like make it super easy for people we do have a PayPal account but I know that is not as uh... Oh, it's well used as uh, Venmo. Yeah. I don't even know if we're allowed to have a Venmo account. I know Amherst has a Venmo account for donors, but they do. Yeah, it's surprising. Like they, uh, yeah, some places have it. Um, other places have more stringent rules around crediting and how donors are um, recognized. So that makes it harder for them to use something like Venmo. Um, like at Yale our rules were much more stringent on like so if i made a collection for my class and then said here yo here's five hundred dollars i would get the credit for five hundred dollars even if i only out of pocket gave twenty dollars and i got the rest from other places so that was the issue we ran into with like text to give and then mowing and things like that um but i don't know what the town's off or the council's issues would be with crediting but Venmo is a very easy way to get people right on the spot at an art event to say, yeah, sure, this is great. I would happily give five bucks. And I, you grow, I'm, I'm going to go into like growing your donor now, like casting that wider net and building that base of people who are used to giving. So if I give $10 every year, then maybe you hit me with like, a, oh, give me $20 this year, like, you know, or donate $20 this year because you gave consistently and moving people into monthly giving and that kind of thing. Um, and then I wonder if, since we won't be doing as much of the program production, if we could actually have staff transition more into a donor outreach and cultivation role so that, um, like, that they still have, um, like, active work to do. Um, and, and there's even more of a case not to cut their hours because they're essentially, like, fundraising for their own positions or the, for the future of their positions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I definitely agree with you, and uh, I think I can change. I can add. Uh, to go back to your Venmo thing. I'm gonna add Venmo to our PayPal account, and that would be an option for our donation page. So I'm gonna work on that. Also, um, I already transitioned uh, one for our production assistant. Does a lot of different um, online uh, integration. It'll be easier to transition to him. But that, that would be like my, been my case if we're not doing as much production. But like right now we're not producing events, but we're producing television. So, you know, there, we're, it's, there's similar amount of workload involved if we produce like an event in Pulaski Park as an event, like at 33 Holly, if we're producing television. So it's, it's more work to produce the yeah. digital version. 
So, and then I'm like starting, like coming up with like, I might even start selling commercials and stuff. So there's like ways that I'm like transitioning the production team. But we still have a lot of work for trans performance and for first night, because we're going to still, I think we're going to still go ahead with it. Uh, but in just a smaller and more of a television way. Um, but going into next year, we're going to have to talk about four Sundays. And I think transitioning them to more development work, I think, is a really oh, good yeah. And then like cutting, I think it might cut Steve's hours in half because it'll still get benefits. It'll still be on, but he can like help us develop more contacts because his skill set is not with computers and not with like organization. He can organize people and like do like on set production, but he, I don't think his skill set is going to be in like, you know, solicitation and like, you know, cultivating new unless he has um, new uh unless he's cultivating new contacts in person. So Brian, I wonder if it would make sense to think about other ways to incorporate fundraising into first night, just so that we can like get some extra funds ahead of that, like January 1st, we're out of money deadline. Yeah. And I wonder if there's anything yeah. like, we're not I know. Money we're not. Course, but I'm just, <laughs> I know. But yeah. That's when we have to start making like this around right. there. But we don't want to have to like, let anyone go or cut their hours right like so assuming that like we need so i mean i'm just wondering like if there's any way we could incorporate like some kind of like merch sales or like an art auction or like something into the holiday giving season where it's like buy a work of art the money goes to the arts council to support our efforts for the next year and like it, it draws on people's generosity. They're shopping anyway. We can really capitalize on December. Yeah. Now would be the moment to. Yeah. Yes, we usually sell buy-ins for first name for that. Mm -hmm. um, so like one thing that's fairly, oh, am I on? Yeah. One thing that's fairly common is as I'm like, say for using first night as an example, I'm registering, I'm buying my buttons online, have another box, a tick box, you know, I'll also support $5, you know, so get, they're already there. They're already, you know, oh, sure. That's great. I'm feeling box. the holiday fuzzies extra five dollars um and then i've also seen like like say like a, a note card set with local artists on it so like selling that and getting part of the brief uh, uh, the proceeds and such those are easy ways to dial in to that time frame and get some money just for the record i have some experience running silent auctions mm -hmm. and not just silent auctions but auctions so uh, I'm volunteering. How fast can you talk? <laughs> no, no, not being the auctioneer. <laughs> no, not any not that job, just organize it. You guys talk about this is like, we get musicians to do us favors. I don't know any visual artists who like to make work for free and, you know, and like donate their work for free. Uh, but it's not, don't, we don't have to ask them to donate their work for free, right? So like if, if the bidding, so if their, if their contribution is at $100, and that's where the bidding starts, then we would get any of the net profits. You know, it's, I don't think that's true, Brian. I, I, when I ran those auctions for what was then called Walking United and the Polis Center, Stephen knows about it, um, I solicited a million donations from artists and they didn't love it and they were used to being asked, but they donated. Hey, it was a good cause. Of course, it's a very different time and they're under it. So you may have a point, but I really didn't have a problem getting people to donate. This goes way back, but um, unfortunately, art auctions in this area uh, many, many years ago really became known as ways for people with money to get art on the cheap. Oh. And the artists who had nothing were asked to give and they got the least out of it. And I, I just, in general, am not a proponent of mm -hmm. art auctions unless they're going to be done in a way and at a time that will dignify artists, that will dignify the galleries that represent their work and not just end up being uh, flea markets or tag sales for art. And I don't think now is the time to do something like that. You're probably right, Stephen. I think that makes sense. Sadly, 
I think it does, and I'm not happy about that. But you know, I think the very earliest art auctions around here were not done aggressively. They weren't done in a way that let artists, you know, get a percentage of the sales. You know, and things just became uh, these things became known as ways for people to get art for less than what it costs in the galleries, which yeah. really screws everybody. That's right. Okay. It's not other time or never. <laughs> I or, just, or, doing it. or better yeah. or better right yeah. oh, go Rachel go Rachel yeah I, I just wanted to say that um a lot of great ideas came in this conversation and I just want to make sure that uh as we pursue all these different forms of giving that we have a way of capturing the contact information for each donor whether they come through Venmo or additional ticket sales, uh, you know, additional gift on ticket sales or through an event, um, because then that would be our mailing list for when we send out the appeal at the end of the year for and get those returns and people who give once are much more likely to give again so that, you know, any, you know, funneling down our mailing list to everyone who has given in the past year or two years or however long we want to set it, um, we would have the, the most success with. Um, and then I also just want to say that it sounds like we're talking both about um, uh, in individual giving and like kind of the, the grassroots populist form of giving where we call on a lot of people giving small amounts. And we've also talked about kind of high level giving and major gifts. And um, it's all essentially going to come from the same pool, but I, uh, but it'll come up to us to piece out you know who belongs on what list and i so i think if we want to keep having that conversation um the board members should probably take a look at what our current list is so that we can share our feedback um with brian and identify who we know and um who we know have capacity and who we just know personally and who we think belongs on on what ask level um and uh, and, and then my final point is that, uh, and I'm sure you've all heard it before, that people give to people. So part of that, um, part of that, that activity of us taking a look at what our, who our donor list is and identifying who we know is because we, you might be the best person to ask um, a, a, cer a certain donor for a gift. Um, but for all you know, you don't know they're on the list yet unless you see it. So um, I think that's another step we can take in, in, um, kind of a, a pretty direct and easy form of fundraising, you know, for, for the end of the year. Yeah, and it would be uh, also good to, while we're doing that, figure out who amongst those people would be good candidates to, for like a donor testimonial. Like, this is why I gave, you know, or this right. is why I feel it's important. And the same with like local artists and people, you know, who are in the scene, you know, why it's important to support them, you know, so getting both of those voices for the same purpose, but having both of those represented to your point about like, people will support people. Well, I wonder if that could actually lead to a, like a video campaign that could run as a commercial in first night, where we have artists that were maybe beneficiaries of the emergency grant or some of our other grants where they were able to execute projects. And I don't know if like, like the, the, the production team have capacity to produce like a, a one minute video reel from like both sides, but that seems like a really, really worthwhile uh, video to produce. So out of this conversation, I'd like to propose that the Inc. starts a fundraising subcommittee. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you need that. I would like um, to solicit members of that committee if you're interested. To yep. me, please let me know. Um, Danielle, to your question, even if there, we're not able to do a like a commercial commercial, you could certainly do a running slideshow or running thing of things around town that people might not know were supported and just have that going in between events, you know, in between things that are on screen. Um, you know, that's the, that's the easier, more rudimentary way of capturing it if we're not able to do something a little bit more like higher production. Um, just having that stuff, people not realize, oh, they supported painting all those utility boxes. They did the, you know, yeah. yeah, the town, the town barricade things that we have too. We have to get a little people, people like to get their names to get listed in a your own horn. Towards the uh, the arts council. A small signing campaign. Um, what if we get some slap stickers? 
some like some stickers to just slap on all of the art that we put up. You know, just stick it right on there. North Hampton Arts Council funded. Um, we need our new logo first. I know. I got it. I sent Eamon the, the, the drawings. Um, I can send you guys a little bit, a little bit of, uh, let me see. I'll show you where, what we're working with. I'll send you a screenshot right now. So what's the latest with the trans performance? Uh, it's happening on, we're starting recording on Sunday. Uh, we'll have three days of recording in a studio. We're going to convert the 33 Holly workroom theater into a, basically a television studio. And then we're going to have three days of live recording and then and we're going to go live on Tuesday. Um, evening from four to nine. Well, four to eight thirty about and we'll we're gonna broadcast uh pre-recorded with live hosts and then a couple live bands all mixed up together and i'm gonna have like ads in between of like our sponsors and people who have uh, donated to the gofundme campaign and we're gonna be soliciting donations as well that night so my idea was for fundraising was to like, you know, we already have this model of event based fundraising and still produce it, but on a, the video piece and, and just use both money campaigns and just ask for what we're doing. So we're doing trans performance. We support the public schools. So please donate. Uh, First night supports our, our easy brand round. Please donate. Arts easy. Please donate. Like we like raise money to give out to for the COVID-19 relief artist fund. Like I'm, asking the community to like step in as opposed to buying a ticket to like donate money. Um, I just think even though we're running full page ads in the Gazette and then I'm paying for Facebook ads, like our reach is there's so many things going on. It's hard to not have the in-person where you're going to, to have an experience and we get your money to get into the gate is a lot harder than like, I can just click on Facebook live and watch it without, without paying. Um, the other model is, is to have a pay gateway to access whatever content we put on Facebook live, but, uh, other production companies that I've heard are not selling, selling that it's not selling well. Um, right. some of those laudable production things they're doing, um, are like selling 16 paid, you know, anyway. so I'd rather have it for free for everybody to have accessibility than like charge somebody $5 and then get 20 people watching it as opposed to 200 or 300. So that's how I've approached this, these two quarters, but I think we need to pivot and like in incorporate um, all of your experience and your ideas from the board and then have, you know, I think we should go maybe for big donors for operating, uh, operating funds to support our operations and like the, the organization. And then we should solicit small donors to support our programming. Um, and then we can delineate between those two um, donor bases. And then I need to cultivate the private donor base. The only private donor base I have is my professional list. They would sell ads for trans performance uh, for different groups of professionals, like artists who support the arts. So I have a list of people in the area artists who support the arts. And then I have like, you know, mental health professionals that support the arts. And I have a list of people and their contact information. But most of our email list that's on MailChimp is mostly email only. It's not full snail mail. Um, I do have all local businesses and um, local corporations snail mail email contact with a person. Um, but the only personal donors I have or private donors are those professionals who support the arts as database that I created because we've never had to really solicit private donors to support our organization in the past. This is the first year in 30 years um, that we can't have live events because of a pandemic or an you know, earthquake or whatever, a natural disaster, if you will. But I would love um, a fundraising meeting and we can put together like maybe a two page strategy that I can have as an action plan to work off going forward so I can stay focused because I can easily sit here for eight hours in front of my computer and do a million things, but like maybe I didn't even touch on like, you know, the fundraising strategy for 2021, you know? So having like a, a little bit of um, 
uh, an action plan for me to, to use to benchmark myself and to work towards would be really helpful. Um, I mean, it, it is a very, uh, like, you know, uh, a, a different form of giving for, to go from like event based fundraising to um, just straight asking campaigns. And so I, yeah, I, but I, I think we've like, got a lot of um, tools at our disposal and it and once it's all together it really is not it's not um, rocket science at all. I would I would say though that in the transition of these two kinds of giving that we may um, we may not always want to tie it into the events because it actually can be made very simple if if we're putting an ask out for people to support the arts we can make that really clear and succinct and uh, we don't have to depend on whether or not they attended trans performance um, in past years it can just be as simple like this is your community you live here if you want to see the vibrant art culture that you've loved for all these years be restored when it's safe for us to gather again please give a gift you know mm -hmm. so uh, i don't think we should ever feel like we have to hold all of our giving to the events that we've had so I had a sort of related question though about possible giving levels or membership structure. And I think the giving levels would kind of tie into Rachel's really eloquent um, phrasing of if you care about the arts in your community, give and here are the different levels at which you can give or other. But then a membership structure might be a way to continue to support this like idea of event-based giving where we think about like you know, a $250 membership gains you a button for first night and a ticket to four of our events or five of our events a year. A gift of the $1,000 level gives you access to all of our events and programming for free. Um, and I guess I just wonder if that's something that is useful or if the execution of that becomes tough after the pandemic when like our production team is doing other work and then has to keep track of how many, you know, holes are left in someone's punch card of, of free events um or if it makes sense for us to to think that that is something for this year only and i, I only directed at rachel and amy because it seems like you both have the yeah. most um i would say like for like if you get like say three events i would make sure they were ones that were like crowds are not a problem you know um you know so ones where you don't have to like limited seating or something um but i think you know as in a lot of areas this type of thing like born out of like necessity you know there's about that that could continue on to so like you know realizing the work that would need to be supported i would almost kind of assume success and kind of assume that there will be some extra effort needed you know human resource wise um ongoing so i would kind of look at both sides of that assuming everything goes well for like the next year is it, I think, you know, sorry amen i thought yeah, you were okay. Is it legal for us to have membership if we are a, a uh, well, this is the ink board, but if we are a city organization, is that allowed? Uh, well, I mean, I think we were just using membership as like a, that's a kind of like a fundraising term. A soft I, term like, okay. I don't know, like, okay. it doesn't necessarily have to be called membership. Okay. You know, it could be like called like Lori's fan, you know, like become a Lori's fan. And, 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 and. <laughs> okay. I, I, for one, um, like, kind of shy away from getting into the business of having to, like, mail gifts out in exchange for donations. I think if somebody wants to give and support you, that's what they want to do, and they're not going to do it because of the button or because of the free tickets, you know? Like, if they want to support, they're going to want to give you a gift, and they're going to want to buy their ticket, you know? So, um, so... I, I think it just it can add a lot of work that m might and make it end up being a wash. Um, so I, I I would you know push toward the straight giving where people are happy to give and they give you the cash and you don't have to do any work after that. Well, if it gets you a button and a, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but if it were to get you a button and a free entry to such and such it wouldn't have to be a lot of mailing it could be emailing and simplified that way it's still a form of fulfillment though like it's an accountability sure. piece that you know you've got to manage 
um, or you know, someone would have to. I'm worried, this is what I'm mostly worried about is that we don't have a physical structure, okay? We're not the Academy of Music, right. we're not the Arts Trust, we're not Smith College, we're not Amherst, we don't have this group of like physical things people walk into. We're like an idea, we're supporting the idea, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, what people support that we do is that they like attend arts events that we support or that we produce. And in the next like year, people can't attend any art events and they haven't been able to attend. So it's like, to me, like what you were saying about, I would need to help, I need to like figure out how to like change the way I think or like like mold this ass that you were, you were starting to draft um, verbally, Rachel, which was really helpful actually for me. Cause you know, I've been doing, been part of this organization for so long that I'm just have that like in, in, embedded of like what our organization is asking for. We ask for your participation in the arts. Um, now we're asking you to watch TV more or whatever, you know, how do we like ask for money for something that's not available to them? You know, it's like, how do you? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's, you know, pe the people who love the arts are going to want to support it and ensure that that the things they love are going to maintain through, you know, make it through this this crisis. So I, I think the giving can be pretty um, direct in that, like, you speak to the what they love and tell them you need their support. Also, we're not all that different from... Um, in structure from like the Northampton Education Foundation, where you know, which is very heavily supported financially, and they also have a granting mechanism, you know. So I like I, I just know like this community is already kind of minded that way, and that's another organization that doesn't have a physical space, but people are just like, oh, I care about education in the place I live. Yes, I'll send a check in, and you know, so it's it can be very. Money. What was that? They just sent them like a million dollars this past year. They're like good forever. I don't know. They just got a huge donation where they're like good for like a long time. Um, but they also, their fundraising is that spelling bee thing and they have their very event based as well until they get this private donor connection. But like, you're right. They have a good model. Um, and maybe I should talk to Dale or other people on their board mm -hmm. as well. Um, uh, I think, you know, us you know, projecting actually our, our impact on the community better would be in following up. And I, I you know, we've, I've started making these like uh, recap things about the events we did so people can go access pictures of what we did. Um, we also sent out emails with our recaps for a public arts festival and all of our summer concert series with links so that people can watch them again and say, hey, in case you missed this, this is what we did. So I think, you know, and maybe having this a report that's more uh, accurate and maybe having just what we do and our impact a little bit more um, visible to people is, is would be helpful. Just like ramp up our communications um, with our patrons and people that support us. Um, um, I was just saying, like, you're right. We're not really like a structure or something, but like we're kind of like we're everywhere, right? Like we're all throughout <laughs> the town, you know? Yeah. So I think that you've got going for it. and you got the, the, which is sometimes harder to build, is like the warrant, the feelings, of like the great, you know, the connection stuff, that's already happened. So like, that's something really to build on that could be harder to start with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I was gonna say is I just did an annual report for a, for a center and it wasn't like a fundraising annual report. Like it was about like all the things, accomplishments. And it was a package like, this mm -hmm. is what we did over the course of the year. And like, this is why we're worth supporting. This was a pitch to a provost, but like, you know, it's this could the same thing could be done here like in a report of the year and it's just highlights of what was done during the year and like why you know the arts council is important and such and such and such and such. I have, mission statements and things like that i have that i just haven't shared it with our donors i just share it with you guys oh, so like something like that could be spun around and packaged in a in that kind of vehicle idea. yeah likewise brian i've gotten like seven texts from friends who told me how much they miss movies in the park oh, sure. right and that's just me it's like like people walk by Pulaski Park to get a picture and say like oh I really miss movie nights yeah. and like that's something that's real to people and like saying do you miss salsa in the park do you miss our live concert series like we miss you too please help us do this next year that's a good idea. Just be, like, people remember people are like impacted by our work and your work 
And you just have to remind them because they've been at home and stressing for too long. Them and me too. <laughs> One thing we could pre-sell would be like opportunities to like for a dunk tank with Brian in it. We just sent, you know, just pre advanced tickets. All, all you want, like we'll just have them there for a whole weekend. You can just come by, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Brian, so. yeah. aside from donors, a list of donors, <clears throat> do we have a, any list, email list of, of people who have attended events? So how difficult would it be to put together an email that you could send out to those people with, you know, Emma was talking or we were talking a little bit about having a short, you know, putting a, together a short slideshow or a short video of people talking about what it means to have this, to attend the Silver Cord Bowl, what it means to, to have first night, what, it, what, it, what it's been like to have, grow up with your kids going to trans performance. I mean, just something brief like that, that could be sent out to everybody who's attended events and, and just ask, you know, we'd really love to continue doing this and keep the artists who create these uh, viable until we get that opportunity to do these events again, something like that, and just ask for money that way really quickly. I mean, I don't know how easy it is to put together that kind of video to embed in an email. Production's on it. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I like that idea. When All I right. go, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Lori. Bye, 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 Bye. Bye everyone. Take care. Okay. Is it okay to have a fundraising goal? Is that? Yeah, is, is the fundraising goal the the grant amount that we want to give out, or is it more than that? Uh, I think we should have that. Oh, what um, are you asking for trans performance? Uh, I have difficulty getting donor information from GoFundMe, by the way. I don't know. Do you want to do that, Rachel? Do you want to export? Um, sh I can give it a shot. I don't have the login. All right, I'm gonna take a look at it. It's pretty. But even once you have it exported probably into Excel, like you'd probably need to, you know, add it to whatever yeah. list you currently yeah. have. I can do that. I have to just take, take some more time, but I think I've had some issues like trying to export those that donor information. Hey, um, Brian, I had a question about, about a document that you had shared. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about this, the, the um, projected budget, the Arts Council Inc. projected budget. Um, I, I, one of the things I saw in it was, and I, you know, I didn't know if it was, this is the way it's supposed to be, but it had Poet Laureate listed twice. Oh, I gotta change that. Um, one for a thousand and one for two thousand dollars. So I, I just wanted to mention that, I'm sorry. Uh, Where was that? With that, it's in that Northampton Arts Inc. projected budget, FY twenty one. Operating Um, I'm not even sure how I was. It was one of those documents that that you had shared, or at least it popped up when I when I opened up one of the documents that you had shared today about the budget. Can I email it to you or share it to you. Or it was shared, I believe. Huh. Or was it the, uh, I'll take a look at that, hold on. Okay, I'll, I can get it to you. Um, Is it a financial summary? It's, it's, it's part of the, I can't see where I, where I opened it up from. Was it Google or was it a? Uh, yeah, it's in a Google, it's in Google Drive. Okay, so it was in the community operation, the community foundation operating grant one? Balance sheet. Oh, I see. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. I'll change that. Yeah, I shared you all the, the financial docs that I did for the Community Foundation grant. So thanks for catching that. Let's see. Poet Laureate 2000. Yep, I see it. I'll fix it. Thank you. Sure. So, I mean, the video is a good idea. Um, what does it get like a, get like a patron talk about like what's it mean to go to like trans performance or first night, you know, for that a long time. 
ask an artist what like an arts council grant means to them. Um, I'm going to ask a board member what, you know, uh, how about asking a board member what, you know, volunteering for the arts council is means to them or like a past board member um, and that kind of stuff. So that's a good idea. I think, I think it would be a good thing to ask Esther because she's got a baby to hold in her arms when she's doing that. That's always a good appeal. <laughs> Or like ask uh, one of the students because we did that programming in the high schools and the middle schools and like you know how is it to what you know how is having like you know the China Academy at your school this past year? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, side update about trans performance: we have like fifty three hundred dollars in the musical instrument fund, and we found a, a student that needs an instrument, and we're gonna be giving them an instrument. So. We're trying to exhaust that fund. And you're that would be fun. that would be another great thing to highlight. Yeah, we're, we're making a good playing your instrument in the. Absolutely <laughs> happening in trans performance on Tuesday. We're gonna give him the, the he's gonna have the thing. He's gonna be playing it. We're gonna talk about it, etc. Save the clip. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So what are they? Oh, you guys are texting stuff. <laughs> yeah, Brian, we're trying to figure out what the uh, fundraising goal would be, which we can continue that conversation yeah. in future meetings as well. But um, I, do you have a rough estimate of what we need to make the budget, uh, given given the la the fewer expenses we have for the for less production? If we want to basically operate like we like operated like the last two years, like up between. Uh, we got to make up like about one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, and then that's in the next six months. Um, but if we want to operate in a, a smaller capacity, like we have in years past, we can do something different. Um, but it, does that account for the fact that we don't need a hundred and seventy-five thousand, or we don't? Is one hundred seventy-five thousand what we used to generate from all these events? Yeah, but we don't need all of it, like. Because we're not having the events, so because so that right. revenue is not actually what we're profiting. We have to, so we should look at like so what we want to, we have to look at with the pay our staff and then what we want to give out. So we want to give out like we usually give out ten grand to the schools. We usually give out twenty grand to local artists. So that's thirty grand, and then like two two quarters are like a year's worth of salary is like. Eighty thousand dollars, like you know, like it's like seventy thousand dollars for Steve and Peter, or something like around there. So we want like around a hundred thousand dollars. Does that include what we would need for the spring grants round? Yes. No. No. Uh, yes, that's a hundred thousand dollars would be stat. It's just, it's just, just uh, obviously I'm rounding everything off. But we need like a hundred grand to pay the staff, and then give out twenty grand in the spring. Do we normally give out 20? Yeah. Okay. okay. Spring. We used to only give out like 10 or 12 or 14 or 15, but because we picked up first name, we have to pick up, we give out more money. Um, but it's nice, you know, I sent you guys the, the summary sheet and that includes this financial quarter. So I have another financial quarter where I have to give out money to I have to pay Stephen Peter. So then we're down another eighteen thousand dollars. Seventeen. So we'll be good. We'll be okay. We have to just start thinking about all the things we're talking about right now. So we can make hundred k. Well, if it's our annual, if we're doing an annual ask, it's hundred k. But if we're splitting, splitting it up like the ask into like trans performance and first night and RTZ, like we're splitting up the, like in the, the ass into different, you know, our programming, programmatic ass, like we normally do, it'll be split up over, you know, like 30K for trans performance. Um, we want to raise like, you know, $100,000 for first night. And then we want to raise like $35,000 for four Sundays. And then we try to reach those. And then whatever gap we can, we have on those, we can do an annual ask to, fill the gap. That's, Does it know. make sense to have two, I mean, and also maybe this is for a separate, for like fundraising committees, but 
Does it make sense to actually just have two campaigns? And one is the event-driven campaign where essentially like we get as much as we can from these events where like, Brian, have you seen that revenue is lower for the online version? Oh yeah. I can't, so, I can't get, you know, I can't sell program ad. Like I, I have to do some more pushing, but like people are, A, don't have any money because of nobody's walking into their stores and I can't sell tickets. So yes, the revenue is way down for all the events. So what if our like goal is actually to do a hundred thousand dollars worth of like grassroots fundraising through the like annual appeal and then anything else we get through events is kind of like the bonus. Sure. It seems like that's not necessarily, I don't know. It seems like that's not a reliable source of revenue right now. I wow. wish it were. Wow. Rachel, is that what you would it's, it's like not just the, like the ask is not just the event. It's just what the event represents, right? It's within there. So um, trans performance is not like don't raise the money. It's raise the money because we're giving it to the schools, right? Uh, first night is raise the money because we give it out to artists. But you're right. We should come up with an annual ask campaign that goes out um, right during tax season. Um, and transition and we'll work on that. We can make the goal be $100,000. And uh, we'll start, I can start cultivating on the, the donor list for that as well. But I think, you know, our weakness is private donors and uh, I can change um, some of our annual asks to the corporations to, to be for an annual ask as opposed to like a event-based ask, so. Yep. yep. That. Um, and I don't know if we have some donor like donors who are able to do it. We could do at when we could look at when it would be the most beneficial time to do a uh, like a match drive. Um, you know, like say if someone has like they'll match up to twenty five thousand dollars, for example, or yeah. something like that, and then do like a three week push at some strategic point, um, and then just like hey, you're you're differently matched. So instead of giving ten dollars, you get twenty dollars on you. Blah blah blah. Is that amazing? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of corporate grants support programs, though. They don't support operating. So that's another thing. But the match could just come from a donor. Yeah. Donor. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, right. so that was my idea that, the, you know, sort of the beginning of the conversation is like having using software to like start identifying new private donors, like wealthy private donors that will support the arts um, to cultivate new relationships. But Right. And um, I wouldn't shy away from, you know, you know, the corporations that's more than I do, but like they're going to do a program, but like the multiple asks. So like, you know, you're there to talk about one thing, but maybe they'll kick in to, you know, maybe they would make another smaller gift to the annual drive as well, you know, like kind of thing. And can we classify our spring grants round as a program? It is a program. Okay. So yeah. that's that's a substantial ask. And if that's something that maybe we save that ask for some like big corporate match that needs to be, or corporate grant, yeah, yeah. whatever, ask for 20 or $30,000 for it or something. That's a great Especially idea. Especially if we might need to use it again for emergency relief. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, that was an effective fundraiser. And maybe that we have that as well as a fundraiser again this year. Is that we, we do that because that was uh, effective, but that was the beginning. I just think, you know, nobody's getting money from the federal government right now, and nobody has jobs. And I have to, I think I, I have to just do a deep think. I'm like, who has money right now that needs to get rid of it? <laughs> Hardware stores, like grocery stores, like what are the, like Amazon, or do they have a grants program we can like apply to? Like anything that's like, which businesses are having like, like, you know, revenue, uh, like having strong revenue streams. Cause it's not Main Street, Northampton. Um, so, well, yeah. Bernie, Ber Bernie Sanders wants to uh, tax the super wealthy one time for people who, who made uh, a, fortune over the uh the pandemic so maybe we can see if you can put our name in as one of the recipients of some of those funds only if you was a candidate for president and we <laughs> much better about everything but this is not um i'll sign up for that one so we'll this grant which is 50 grand and we can use it for operating which will cover salaries which is great 
Um, I, I'm going to apply to a small business grant uh, that opens on August 31st. Um, I'm going to see if they come out with a, the PPP, uh, like forgivable loan again. I think there's a new round of that coming out. I can maybe apply to that. And I'm going to keep on trying to, to, to do that to just take care of operating. And I think that we should support our, you know, our grant programs with these donor asks or annual asks that you guys are talking about. We can focus on that. So that's a pretty good strategy. And then uh, and I'll engage North Lincoln Open Media and my production team on putting together a really good donor video. Because we've done, we've, we've, we've already incorporated video into like our productions in the past and we can more than, we can put together like a one minute video. And hopefully I'll get on the ass of our designer to get like a whole new logo redesign. This is a really good time to come out with like, I think um, a logo redesign and a rebranding. And then, uh, and then maybe have some, you know, nice enamel pins or whatever for donors or stickers or whatever. Some masks, you want some like logo masks with the Arts Council on them. So, okay, I think we have a great plan in the works and Brian, you've also been doing like so much extra work that's outside of your regular job to like keep things going. And I don't know if anyone's like telling you great job, but like you're really doing a great job Thanks. and like you're doing a wonderful job and like constantly doing these grant proposals. I know is like, it, it shouldn't actually be <laughs> your job and you're doing it to keep your staff on board and keep us going. And that's so, so important. Um, my question is, I know the mayor has the ability to go to the city council for changes to the budget. If there was, if for whatever reason, we, there's like a way worse, you know, set of economic circumstances and we're not able to like fundraise to keep salaries where they are, could we go to the, could you go to the mayor and ask? I'm going to ask, the mayor. To I'm gonna ask the mayor for Steve's salary next year in January. Okay. That would be great. That's and let us know what we need to do, like to support that ask. Yeah, like yeah. I'll call him. I'll I call Jim Nash again. His mailbox is still full. If anyone knows Ward Three Council Rep Jim Nash, please tell him to clean his inbox. Okay, it's like public, but like that guy is. Um, yeah. So I had a conversation with Kathy Murray, and I forgot to mention this: that like my ask for our FY twenty two budget is going to cover Steve's salary. And then I was gonna like ask you or any other board members to go to some of the budget meetings as well myself and then make a case for the arts council. And I'll, I'll get more, uh, I used to know all the city councilors and now I don't know any of them. So I have to get a little bit more um, familiar with all the city councilors again. And then we can well, there are gonna be several openings coming up in the next year. So if anyone wants to run or support some campaigns, please let me know. Go for city council. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a conflict of interest? Could I remain on the arts council? You couldn't be on the arts council anymore. I'm, you have no idea like how frustrated I am with trying to get in touch with my council member. Is it Jim Nash? Oh my god. Maybe Facebook message? Maybe he's a Facebook guy. I don't know. Maybe he's a Facebook guy. I don't know. I've called his, like his, I have him in my contacts list because I call so frequently to address my concerns. <laughs> Go to his house. Just knock on his door. That's what he has to do. He has to pandemic. What? Oh, that's right. Pandemic. I need to go. I want to say good night to everybody. Thank you all. I need to take off as well. What ward are you in, Danielle? Ward three. I'm gonna sign off too. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you. Yeah. What else you got? Yeah. I mean, that's something. I'm I'm happy to like do an email campaign where I draft a template and have everyone send it and say like. This is what we're asking for, send it, and we can totally organize something like that. We'll do on that. I'm, that's going to be my meeting between like January and March, and I'll like we can put together like a budget ask, and you can help me. But we can do the uh, we do like a little report of what we did this year, and then we can ask for more money for the city. So like, I'm, that's a really great idea, and I'm definitely supporting. I'm down. <laughs> I was thinking about that today when we were talking to the tre uh, me and Kathy had a, our treasury meeting today, so. That's what I was like, I'm just gonna ask the city to pay Steve now because he's been here for a while and he's done great work. And I think that, you know. Full time. Yeah, it's about time for them to pay for Steve too, so. Awesome. Or like maybe half for both of them or something like that. Like some, some because like, you know, we used to have, my, my salary used to be like 70% like city and 30% ink, 
you know, I can, I can see if I can broker a deal like that, but I'll go, I'll ask for the sky and then see what they get, get, get of that. So, um, that's, they're probably going to say, Oh, we don't have it in the budget, but I'm going to ask for it. It's in the budget. Budgets reflect priorities. It's there. It's just a matter of what they think is more important, like hybrid police cars. So that's fine. We just have to ask. We should all just ride uh, electric bikes around. They should just use the Valley Bike Share electric bike. Yeah. Those are fast. Absolutely. Um, thank you for all your time. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime you have questions or you want to talk. I'll be down to Zoom whenever. And I'll be picking your brain more. Eamon, did you get my email? And I, I, I sent a screenshot of those uh, logos. Let me know what you think about those. Yeah. They're in the chat. And then I'll, uh, I think we can maybe do an annual ask with our new branding and think that might go together well. And, and then we'll ask the city and then we'll ask for program funds and I'll keep on applying the grants and hopefully we get through this really tough time. We can still do all the things that we do, you know? I'm working hard on it. I'm thinking about it every day, trying to figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Performance is on Tuesday. Don't miss it. Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Start, what time does it start? Four o'clock. Normal. It's the same time as Trans Performance. And uh, the roster has been updated. You can see who's doing it. And it's Live Aid, the 1985 concert. I really appreciate all you guys very much. Do you have a much. link for it on your website? What? Do you have a link for it on our website? Yeah, yeah, it's right on our website. It's on it's on our Facebook page. You just go to our Facebook page. And you like, and you can actually like say that you're like, interested in seeing it. I'll invite you on Facebook and so you're interested and it'll tell you when it's happening. It'll like remind you. So it's four o'clock on Tuesday and you just go to Facebook and it'll be like right in front of you there. But I'll send the link to it right now. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Right. Here, here's the link to all the stuff we've been doing, Ellen. Okay. Thank Here. you. If you just go to this, you can see like the last summer, all the stuff we've been doing live is right there. You go to the chat. Oh, right here. You got it? Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Ditto, huh? ditto what Danielle said, Brian. Got what? D ditto what Danielle said. Ellen. Like, work. Like, like Danielle also. Yeah, right. she's, a, she's a, I really like having her on our board. She's she works for the hard one. Uh, Fire brand, I love it. She does, yeah. Um, say hi to everybody for me over there. I hope you're doing well. Pleasure, okay. Take care. Stay sane. Thanks.